In the name of the creating, redeeming, and sustaining God. Amen. Welcome to Good Friday. Today, having studied and learned about creating new narratives, I can approach this day and the foot of the cross with greater peace and understanding. As a child and a young person growing up, I always dreaded Good Friday. The name itself was confusing. Good Friday? I got the overall point that it was good because Jesus was willing to die for my sins. But that idea did not seem so good to me, that God required Jesus' betrayal and death in order to forgive me, pointing out the overwhelming magnitude of my sinfulness. The horror of what happened to Jesus traumatized me, especially when embedded in this larger religious story that Ed called the authoritarian father narrative. It proposed a strict moral hierarchy. God is on top of a coercive power structure of rewards and punishments, including physical punishments for those who disobey him. This God, like a brutal narcissist needed the death of one child in order to accept the rest of us into the family. After which, we were to love that father and be nice to everyone else. My human father had died and I really wanted one in heaven. This old, incoherent story made me both want to be close to and hide from God at the same time. What a destructive story. It modeled, in Gandhi's words, brute force rather than love force as a path to change. The use of power to coerce others can teach us to desire power and despise weakness in ourselves and everybody else. This story blinds us to God's loving kindness to all our frailties and failings. And poor Peter, the only way I could wrap my mind around the betrayal by this best friend was one of judgment for his lack of courage. He was the cowardly lion of the passion narrative. And secretly, I identified with Peter, and I had the haunting feeling that I, too, would betray Jesus if put to the test. In Luke's narrative, Jesus looks at Peter after the cock crows, and I dreaded the thought of that look. I imagine Jesus looking at Peter with accusing eyes and his face full of disappointment and shaming. And I imagine that look could come straight through Peter right on to me. Which of course it could have, because I had not always stood by God, and I have failed people I love or been silent when I should have spoken up. We all have betrayed. We all have been false to what is deepest within us. What I needed on Good Friday and what we all really need every day of our lives is a new story about God that can bring back together all the things that are broken apart in our lives and in the world. We need someone who knows us and can help us know our true selves. We need someone to deeply ground us in kindness. Greg Boyle has said that sooner or later we all discover that kindness is the only strength that there is. Yet kindness has always been contentious in the human family. History shows us many expressions of our human desire to connect and empathically link ourselves with others. But it also shows us human alienation and how our capacity to care for each other is inhibited by fears and rivalries. This alienation is on full display in our current political discourse. 
with a no-holds-barred defense of egoistic individualism proposed by some, sowing suspicion that kindness is a virtue for losers. This rhetoric proclaims that kindness is dangerous and weak, or feminine and weak, especially when offered to someone outside one's own tribe. And when we shoehorn God into a narrative of strength as dominance over others, we relegate kindness as only for those who are like us and those whom we like. Our story of God gets narrow and mean. And that's part of why we need Jesus, to help us know who God is Jesus, Jesus gave us a new story about God that bridges the alienation within and between us and grounds us in God's inexhaustible love. Jesus challenged the dominant story that God was a lawgiver and judge who punished and rewarded us in this life or the next. Instead, he portrayed God as a loving parent who runs towards us, clasps us, and kisses us even if, like the prodigal son, we are still a long ways off. In my work as a psychologist, I have long known the healing power of empathy and compassion. All of us are vulnerable at every stage of life. In fact, our vulnerability is a fundamental commonality between us and a medium of contact. Kindness sees behind the false self and the surface presentation to the vulnerability that is underneath. God's loving kindness honors and supports our frailties, and this, in turn, allows us to bear our own vulnerabilities with tenderness. God knows us and loves us as we are. In this new story, God did not come because God had seen the sin of the people and needed someone to die. God came because God knows our suffering and could not bear to stand apart from it. Far from a patriarchal authoritarian, God came as a baby, defenseless and utterly dependent on the loving care of human parents. Jesus knew that compassion was the vital energy at the center of everything that exists. He knew that loving kindness was the power and source of all life and the very ground of our being. Jesus stood in a tradition that spoke of knowing God as one knows a good lover. The deepest level of mystical experience is a loving union of one's being with God's being. And when we dwell there, we feel an abiding sense of being beloved. Jesus felt known and loved by God. And from this union flowed an indiscriminate love for the whole universe. Jesus' heart was aligned with God's heart, compassionate as God is compassionate, fully open and feeling the pain and suffering of others. Jesus healed and gathered together all that had been broken apart. And that is why we love him so. Jesus touched lepers and hemorrhaging women he entered a graveyard to reach a mentally ill man cowering among the tombs. He invited absolutely everybody to the dinner table. Jesus kept proximity with the despised and marginalized, shattering the socio-political boundaries of the culture around him. Jesus replaced the politics of restricted kindness with the politics of unbridled compassion. This put him at great odds with the imperial powers of dominance, which brings us to today, to Good Friday, 
and to the story of Jesus' descent through all the cruelty and alienation this world has to offer. Now that we know that there are new and healthier ways to tell the old story, let's take a new look at Peter. Let's try the lens of kindness, the loving kindness we know that Jesus embodied. The story of Peter's betrayal is very poignant because he has just told Jesus that he of all his followers will never fail him. I am ready to go with you to prison and to death, he tells Jesus. But Jesus knows Peter. He knows his passion and desire, and he knows his frailty, which Peter himself is pushing away. Jesus tells Peter that he has prayed for him, and he tells Peter that he will betray Jesus, just as Peter does before the cock crows. Jesus also tells Peter that he will recover and grow stronger, and that when he does, Peter should return and strengthen others. Jesus knows and accepts Peter, and he gives him a way back. Jesus grounds Peter in kindness. During Jesus' trial, Peter stands as close to Jesus as he can. He is traumatized and confused, and he hides. In fear, Peter betrays what is deepest in himself, and he abandons the deepest love he's ever known. And when his eyes meet Jesus, I imagine those eyes differently now, not accusing or shaming or blaming but grounding Peter. I imagine Jesus' eyes are grounding, compassionate, knowing, expressing connection across the terror, reconciling all that is broken and ugly. Jesus sees in us what we don't see in ourselves until we do. Welcome to Good Friday. What you need on Good Friday, what we all need every day of our lives, we have. God is compassion and loving kindness. God's love does and will bring back together all things that are broken apart in our lives in the world. Even in our despair, God sees us and knows our true selves. Even in the darkest of hours, God promises to help us see ourselves as God does. Even at the foot of the cross, we are eternally grounded in kindness. Amen.